So one of the cool features of Alta UI is this type of UI that you can see in the Work Better application here. So what you see here is information about employees, but what we're trying to do is not overcrowd the form with too much information. And in order to show more information, we have this card flip um, technique. Okay, So basically, you're showing some information on the front, but to get more information, you basically flip the area and you show the other side. So let's see how you can actually build one of those in your own application. So we're in a project in JDeveloper, and I switched the project to use the Alta UI, and we're going to create a new page, and we're going to use the tablet first template. And I'm going to use the source tab to do the editing of the page. So we're going to show details about employees. So we have here an employee data control that we can just drag and drop on the page. Right? So we'll put it in the center facet. And we're going to use a list view. A simple panel grid layout. You can keep it there two by two and then just add some data, first name, last name, let's add the email and the phone number. Right. So this gives us our list view, and inside the list view, if we look over here, we have the list item with a panel grid layout. So what we want to do in order to show the card type of UI, is we're going to add a um, box around this panel grid. So we're going to do surround width and choose a panel box. And we also want to add another panel box to our UI, which would actually function as the other side of the card. So let's call them by specific name. So the first box would be box one. This is the ID. And the second box would be box two. And now in order to switch between the two, we are going to use one of the newer UI components. And this component is called the deck component. Okay, so just take the deck and drop it inside the list item. And then what you want to do is you actually want to move the boxes to be inside the deck component. The deck component allows us to switch between the two views. And what we want to do is we also want to add an animation when we're doing this switch. So the animation comes from another new component called the transition component. So look this one up, and let's add it into the deck component. And there are multiple events that can trigger that transition. We're going to add one for the forward navigation, and we're going to add another one for the back navigation. And for each of those transition, you can specify an effect. Right? So let's do, for example, a flip end in our case. And here we can actually do a flip start. So this sets up the area for showing uh, the two boxes. Now, in order to decide which box you're going to use, the AF deck has a property which is called display child. Now we are going to change it dynamically, so we're not going to hard code a value here, but rather we're going to write an expression. And we're going to use a view scope variable that I'm going to create now, and we'll call it box. And we're going to ask whether this one equals 
box 2. Okay, so this is a question. And then if it is equal box 2, we're going to show box 2. And otherwise, we're going to show box 1. So this is quite simple. Now we need to actually have something that switches the value of this view box. So to do that, we're going to use a link component. Okay. That we're going to add to each one of the boxes in the toolbar. So one here. And we can add another one. We'll add it actually later on by doing copy paste. So the link needs to set a value. So we're going to pick up from the operation the set property listener operation. And drop it on the link. So this is the link in box one. So it's actually going to set the value to be box two. And it's going to put it inside our view scope box variable and it's going to do it when we press the action now we don't actually need to refresh the whole page when we press the link so let's switch the link to do partial submit so we don't submit the whole page to the server so partial submit is true so this is the link here. Oh, one more thing we want to do is you probably want, instead of having text here, you probably want to use icons. So get yourself a nice icon that indicates a flip action and just use it here. So this is the first link and we're going to just copy this one and put it inside the second box. So in box two, we're going to add to the toolbar facet, the same code basically, but switching this time to box one. And there's a little error because the ID is the same, so you can use this little generate unique ID helpful light bulb. So now your page is okay. And we also want to show something on the other side of the card, right? So what we want to do here is probably show something in a visual way. So this is another thing that Alta is trying to do is um, use a lot more data visualization. So let's use, for example, a status meter and just drop it into the box. Okay, and we'll use the new circular status meter here. And the value for this, we basically want to show the salary. So right now we don't have the salary on the page. So let me show you how you edit directly in the binding. You go over here to the binding that is already there for the list view. And you just say, okay, add the salary field as well. And then in the source, you can basically just copy, for example, this input value of the phone number, right? And then go to the status meter, add the value property. And instead of showing the phone number here, we're going to show the salary. Um, the other thing you might want to do is give different thresholds. So just to indicate the value immediately by different colors, right? So we already have a threshold here that basically says um, for one value, use one type of color. So this is actually, you know, it, this is red. So we want to say this is going to be for any salary that is, let's say, below 10,000. And then over here again, you want to generate a unique ID and say for other salaries, we can use something like, um, this is RGB. So let's use 00 for red, FF for green and 00 for blue. And this is for all the other values. And of course, don't forget to your status gauge, you want to set um, also the range of values over there. So let's say salary in the AMP table is usually below 30,000, so this should be okay. All right, so this is the other side of our card. One more thing we want to do, um, 
the deck component that we have here needs to be aware that we press the links. So we achieve this by using a partial trigger. So go to partial triggers, and instead of just remembering the ID, you can just very easily navigate into so into the boxes, pick up from the toolbar each one of the links that you created, and just add them. So the partial, so the deck would know to refresh. That's your page. Let's run it. So here's the front of our card, and when we click here, we actually spin the card to the other side. You can see the effect happening, and see the information for each one of those employees. If we have an employee that doesn't make a lot of money, we'll see it in red immediately, and we'll know something is wrong. So this is the basics of how you create those flippable cards. Um, in the next video, we'll show you how to skin them.